All right, my man, we are live. How are you, DM? I'm awesome, Alex. How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm blessed, dude. Let me tell you, man, it is, uh, it's, uh, this, this is your third time on the show, and it's always, always awesome to connect with you, man. You and I have known each other for several years now, man, and I'm, uh, I'm so proud of you, dude. Uh, Magician versus Mule, we'll talk about it, obviously, here on the show. 10-time uh, Amazon. There you go. Look at that. That thing's beautiful. 10-time Amazon best-selling author. Serial entrepreneur, man, you uh, you're a big inspiration, brother. So uh, you know, I'm blessed to call you a friend, and it's uh, it's awesome to have you on the show here. No, man, thank you very much for having me. I can't believe I've been on three of your four shows, though. That's amazing. Ah, <laughs> there you go. More like three or four hundred and something, but close enough. I'm messing with you. It's awesome. Man, I know, man. I know. Um, so, brother, um, guys, just so you know, I want to make this fun. I want to make this interactive. <laughs> um, so start getting any questions in. You know, we're, I have I have several questions I want to ask Mark. I mean, I like to go with the flow here and just have a conversation. Um, but we want to get you guys involved as well. So type in where you're from. Type in your name. Uh, again, we're gonna make this interactive. Just so you guys know, one of the things we'll be talking about here is Mark's new book, Magician versus Mule. You've probably heard about it because you know there's been a a lot put out there on social media, and uh, and hopefully I can ask him some questions that people haven't asked him already. But just so you guys know, I picked up eleven copies recently, and I want to give away ten of them on this live. All right, so um, all you guys have to do is share the broadcast and uh, and head over and subscribe to the Flip Empire Show. Send me uh, an email, alex at flipempire.com with your name and address. And I will first 10 people, I'm going to get Mark's new book, Magician versus Mule over to you guys. So um, having said that, how is life in the DM world? Dude, talk to me. Man, it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, it's weird to say with what all that's going on, but, yeah. you know, as you know, I've been virtual since 05. So this is kind of like a normal life to me. It's uh, yeah. I was just talking with my buddy, Corey, you know, I'm kind of isolated already. I'm kind of you know, working on myself constantly as you are too. And, you know, it's, I, our businesses are growing. We're hiring, we're, we're plotting, we're, you know, pivoting, we're, you know, seeing where we're weak, seeing where we're strong, but, you know, we're doing that anyways. We're doing yeah. that when things are good. Yeah. Um, the truth is actually we're doing it. We, you always do it more when things are a little tighter, mm -hmm. you paying attention to things a little bit more. Sure, um, sure. You know, my leadership skills are being challenged, which is good. You know, I'm strengthening my leadership challenges and, uh, just trying to plot along and, and do stuff like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it, man. So you, you run multiple businesses and you know, you've always been such a big thinker for the four or five years I've known you, you know, every time I have a conversation with you, I feel like I walk away thinking a little bit different, not just thinking bigger, um, but just thinking different and asking the right questions. That's something that I remember one of our first conversations years ago, you planted a seed with me. You said, it's all about asking the right questions and you're going to find the right answers, or at least you're going to start going down that path, right? Talk a little bit about that. I got several things I want to kind of get into with you in the hour that we have, but okay. talk about the, the power of asking yourself the right types of questions and not just yourself, but you talked about being a leader. Talk about the power of asking the people you work with, JV partners, collaborative partners, the right questions. Well, I mean, listen, if you, uh, you know, I'm, I've always been a fat kid. So if I look in the mirror and say, why am I fat? Well, you're going to keep finding the answer. You know, the yeah. real question is, who do I need to become to yeah. be in the, the visual shape that I want to be in? Mm -hmm. you know, why do I keep feeling like crap? Well, you always find the reason why you keep feeling like crap. You're not mm -hmm. doing anything to make, you're just asking the wrong question. In business, why do I keep mm -hmm. having bad talks? Why, why do sellers keep telling me no? Why do investors, why are there no investors? Well, the truth is, you're, the, real da the real question is data, not drama. Yep. You know, how many investors did you ask for the money Two. Well, that's why the, that's the answer. It's real simple that, you know, the concept is you're not asking enough people. So I think a lot of times people are so emotional. Emotions lie. <laughs> They're so emotional. And uh, they think if they if they did as much work as they thought about, they'd be billionaires. Clearly, <laughs> um, I, I remember seeing a sign in the gym back in the day. Is above the water fountain said, if you worked out as much as you thought about it, what would you look like? So true. <laughs> you know, it's and so I was true. like, this is interesting, but it's like yeah. working out. Like when you go to the, I never feel bad when I get in the gym. It's all the self talk before I get to the gym. That's where the problems happen. So yeah. it's like in business, and you know we don't have anybody checking us in business except results. That's our that's our reality check. They're either there or they're not. Um, so having great conversations with your, it always starts with yourself first. You know? mm -hmm. And unfortunately, man, I don't think a lot of people ask great questions. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And, and and you're somebody that you've always seen the value in working on yourself. You know, education never stops. And, um, you know, it's by most people's standards, they look at you and they see somebody that's highly accomplished, somebody that's very wealthy, but you've talked about it in the past. It's all relative and you don't know what you don't know yet. You feel like you're at this point, but yet you're always challenging yourself. It's always like, what's next? How do I get to that next level? How do I grow? How do I empower myself? Um, and I think those are the types of questions that people need to ask. It's how can I do more with what God has given me? You know, we've talked a lot about your unique ability. I remember we did a, a rolling with the DM episode years ago and you asked me, you're like, Alex, what's your unique ability? And that's something that self-awareness is so important, especially as an entrepreneur. Share, share some quick thoughts on that. Well, I mean, self-awareness gives you more confidence too. I think yeah. the reason a lot of people aren't confident is because they're trying to be everything for everybody. And what happens is you can't be the true, self, your, your highest self, like you said, mm -hmm. God gifted talent. So for me, it's like at the end of the day, I really, you know, again, this is all a journey, by the way. This isn't something I woke up and figured out. I'm still learning. Right. Um, I haven't figured much out, but I think the biggest thing for me is like, you know, once I realized, Hey, I'm a real, I am a deal maker. I'm really good. I love people. I love putting good deals together that make sense for everybody. Um, some guy was texting me today. There's a deal we're about. It's a four hundred thousand dollars spread. He's like, "Well, I'm gonna go back to the seller." I'm like, "Why would you go back to the seller and get a better deal? It's already a good deal. What yeah. are you gonna do? Get fifty grand on offer? Twenty? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Just because you can doesn't mean you should." Right. You know, a lot of people teach different strategies and stuff like that. But like, I'm not that hardcore negotiator. I want a fair deal for all. Mm -hmm. You know, so. My unique ability is, you know, I, I think being real with myself and saying, hey, I, this is not just about money to me. This is about my life's work. I want, you know, my kids are watching, my family's watching, and I want to be a good leader. Not only that, to your team, too. You don't want, I, I don't want to be that guy that's beating everyone up for every penny and yeah. trying to figure out how to nickel and dime my way to wealth. I've realized that about you, brother, that you've never, you, you've never struck me as somebody who's always trying to get the best deal. But from my perspective, Mark, one of your unique abilities is your the way that you're able to connect with people on a personal level. I mean, uh, something that uh, you sent me one time. Uh, so my my daughter, Alessia, was born. She just had her third birthday. I know because Drea and Alessia are kind of around within a day or two of each other. And you sent me in the mail a bunny that had her name. Like it was a little, uh, a little bunny or a bear that had a t-shirt with her name. And I was like, the fact that this dude took the time you know, and it, it's those little things that just leave an, a lasting impact. Here I am three years later and I haven't forgotten that. You know what I mean? And I've seen you be very purposeful and intentional about connecting with people and just giving and sharing. And and uh, so that's inspiring, man. I want people to know that about you because, you know, you've built successful businesses and you're constantly growing and striving for more, but you're very good about connecting with people on a personal level. And I think that's something we can all learn from, you know, myself included. Yeah, I'm trying to be better at it. Yesterday, I missed someone's uh, big event, you know, and it upsets me. I was texting my assistant. I'm like, how did we miss this? Because I've, I've, I've not missed it before. And, uh, you know, so not, again, we're not perfect there, but like, I, I'm, it's very thoughtful. It's a very forward thinking process that I'm always looking at. If I see a big events happening, yeah. like anniversaries or birthdays or newborns, <clears throat> new, I mean, I'm always looking. I think what it does though too, Alex, is it, it shifts your mind to wanting to, to posit, like planting the seed of, and seeing good in everybody. Yeah. You know, like yeah. There's so much gratitude with it. Like who, who's going to throw out a, an amazing gift of your daughter's name on a pair or, you know, whatever, like no one, it, it just doesn't even make sense. Even when we do deals yeah. with people, we get, send them money trees, right? We throw out a human, a money tree. Cause it's a tree. It's a living, breathing thing. You know, a gift basket of candy and fruit. Maybe that's a different story, but like, I'm thinking about things that are longevity plays that could really just be there. And like, it's just the thought, you know, how has that impacted your life? Like when you look back throughout the years and by the way, I, I want to just plant the seed with people that you're doing it. You're being genuine about it. It's not because you're expecting to get something in return. That's just who you are and you're being sincere and genuine. I, I think if, if you have a motive or if you have an angle, people are going to see right through that. And it kind of defeats the purpose. Like, don't do that. Um, but the fact that you've been genuine about it, how have you seen your life been impacted? Your business has been impacted by just doing that with people. Yeah. I mean, it's like anything, man, you can't outgive the world, you know? So I think for me, it's impacted me because it makes me, I, I, I like to give. It makes, as you know, 
giving is the best gift in the world. I think just being in the position to be able to give, by the way, if you don't have money, it could be your time, it yep. could be a card, it could be a letter to someone. It's 30, 42, whatever it costs to send a stamp. Like it's so just to take a second, especially in today's world, just taking a minute, write a letter. Hey, Alex, thank you very much. Just something simple and thoughtful yeah. and two minutes out of your day to let someone know you're thinking about them. Right. I, I think it's probably one. I really think, forget about the financial side, what it's done for me, but like the personal side, it's just, it's awesome. I mean, we're talking about what we get, I gave you and I, I have many, the truth is most people I've given to, I've never done business with, honestly. Yeah. It's not about a business motive. It's about like, hey, congratulations. This is amazing. This is yeah. amazing. So how, how do you track and manage it all? Because, you know, I, I've talked to people about, I, I remember I gifted, I've gifted the book Giftology a couple of times. I think that's what it's called, Giftology. Giftology. And I, we, I had a conversation with a few people about it, entrepreneurs that I respect and are, are, do very well for themselves. And the challenge that they've come back with me is like, I got so much going on that just having a system to track it and manage it. And like, I, there's all these people that I want to give to. And it's there's all this organized chaos going around in people's minds. Do you... Yeah. Is that person overthinking it or do you have, do you have a, just a way that you kind of manage it because you have such a large network and you're constantly giving, you know, how do you do it? Me and my assistant, we're very conscious of it. It's a conscious activity in our company. Yeah. You know, it's something, like I said, I messaged her today, yeah, last night and said, how did we miss this? You know, it's a, uh, I mean, we have a schedule, we have people's birth dates, we have birth, birth you know, anniversaries, big moments in their life. Um, we miss it. Uh, you know, the beautiful thing is it's never been easier now with social media. Yeah. You know, so I can go and click on Alex's uh, profile and it says his birthday is this date and that date. And I mean, it's, it's never been easier. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but the truth is like, I don't worry about the, I don't schedule it and all that. I'm actually kind of a little bit more thoughtful on the front end. Mm -hmm. So it's not like where I'm planning out like gift one is this gift three is that like right, right. I'm giving thoughtful gifts. Maybe it's a duplication of a gift. Maybe I've never had that happen, but maybe I have and they've never said anything, but I, you know, I'm evolving. My gifts evolve. I'm not sending the same thing every day. Um, and, and, and the truth is they're thoughtful gifts about the individual. Yeah. It'd be a little weird if I sent people the same gift I sent you for your daughter, you yeah, know, with the, yeah. with the daughter's name on it. Like it's a very, thoughtful gift giving process. And I think that's what's so like, what's meaningful to me is the fact that it, it's not just, Hey, you know, uh, pay for this and go send it to the person to check off a box. It's, you can tell that you're actually very just again, thoughtful and intentional about it, which, um, which I want people to know about you because uh, like you said, you know, I think it was Tony Robbins. You and I have both been to his events and I think he's, uh, well known, many things he said, but he, one of the things he says that sticks with me is, um, the secret to living is giving, oh. you know, and, and the go giver is probably one of my top five favorite books. Great, great. Um, if you guys haven't read that, well, speaking of books, that's kind of a perfect segue and transition. This is your 10th best-selling Amazon bestseller magician yeah. versus mule. And I think I heard you say somewhere it's been your, your favorite or your most important one. To, I don't want to assume that people watching this and the people watching the future know what magician versus mule is. I know you've talked about it a lot. Um, let's start at ground zero. What exactly is magician versus mule? What's this book about? What are people going to get out of it? Yeah, no, I, you know, throughout my journey, I've been an, I've been a business owner since 18 years old. I've never had an, a, a job in my adult life, my W2. I've always worked for myself. If I don't kill it, I don't eat kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, I never realized what a, a mule was until I started getting a little bit further down the path, 10 to 11 years deep into business and realized like I, I'm a mule. We're all mules. We're all designed by mule. We're all designed to be mules and people wear it with a badge of honor. Like Alex, like, Hey, I work 12 hours. I'm like, I work 14. You know, it's like, yeah. I'm trying to outwork you, whatever that means. It doesn't mean anything by the way. It's all relative because mm -hmm. it's about production and about, you know, being efficient and effective and all that. It's not about working. So the mule mentality is, go to school, sit down, shut up, raise your hand, watch the clock, three o'clock. Okay. I can leave now. But what if I got my work done at noon? Why do I have to stay for three extra hours? Just right. because like, the person right. beside me to the left and right, take three extra hours longer or my boss or whoever the teacher is, you know, I always jokingly, but seriously said, like I was not a good kid in school. Cause I just, I didn't understand the concept right. of why do I need to be here? If I have nothing to do, I want to get out and do something. Right. Exactly. And, um, you know, I called it collaboration. The teachers and the principal called it cheating in school. So I was collaborating with the person beside me that got A's in English and they could collaborate with me in math because I got A's in math. So it was easy. But 
you know, don't get caught because that's called cheating. But in real <laughs> life, man, as you know, in business, dude, if you're not collaborating, you're dying. You 100%. Know, mules are afraid to ask for help. They think it's weakness. I think it's strength. Yep. Uh, mules think mules have egos, by the way, which is interesting. I know mules that make millions of dollars a year, by the way. So it's not like you have to be broke to be a mule. It's just you literally, you want to talk about no balance in life at all. A mule yeah. that makes a lot of money, they are they're so they're working so hard for something and you know it's constantly the, the carrot in front of them they're always moving and um, there, there's a lot of power in the mule mentality and again I, I, I love we're all mules so we just got to acknowledge it that's first and foremost that's the purpose mm-hmm. of the book to know what we are first so now we can start working on it and um, magician to me is the transition of a magician I mule it out still right now we're muling right we're working but yep. it's a one to many mule process that's right we're going to shoot this for an hour. And it's going to be seen 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. You and I could shoot the same exact hour in the office one-on-one and we'll get it. Nobody sees it. Yeah, no right. one sees it. So we live in a world where you could be the magician at the highest level so easy now. It's never been easier. So, you know, the problem is, is a mule can't stop because they're always throwing more stuff on their back, more stuff on their back. And I saw my parents, their, their mules at the highest level, man. And mm-hmm. uh, I never knew what it meant until I started like going through the transition of becoming a magician and, realizing I could be laying in bed and put a million dollar deal together. Yeah. You know, yeah. The mule doesn't do that. Mules actually fight about it. Like, Hey man, you know, we actually wear it with a badge of honor. Like I work harder than you. I make, I make more than you. I like, what does all this mean? I don't understand what we're talking about. So it's just really coming to a realization that. Yeah. You know, how does Jeff Bezos have multi billions of dollars and he has the same 20, like everyone has the same 24 hours. That's right. That's you know? right. So what makes one person different? It's really mindset, man. That's right. And the truth is, is that, you know, somebody like Bezos, you know, contrary to he's probably not smarter than the average person. I mean, he's a sharp guy. Obviously, he's got he's got he's a he's a savvy businessman. Obviously, I mean, that's that's an understatement. But like to your point, he's got the same resources when he started Amazon, probably that most people have out there. Right. Um, I mean, and, and the fact that Amazon is I don't want to get off topic, but 20 years old, 25 years old, you know, and, and it, I mean, it's just amazing. It it. it I think it shows you that anything is possible if you got this up here right. You know what I mean? I mean, it's all mindset. Yeah, I was talking with my buddy today, Corey, and he like I, I think everyone's working on mindset. The truth is most aren't, you know. So you and I do. Like it's normal mm-hmm. for us to spend an hour, two hours a day reading or writing or yeah. doing this or consuming content. But like, you know, unfortunately a lot of people aren't, Alex, and I think you're missing the boat if you think we realize education doesn't stop. Self-education will be something right. until we die, you know, like, and, and what's cool about self-education, the more you educate, the more you want to learn more. Mm-hmm. You're unlocking all these doors. You're like, I can do what? <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. I don't have to do this and I can make how much? Like, this is pretty cool. And, and not all markets are created, you know, equally. Like Jeff, the reason Jeff is able, Jeff, like I'm his buddy, Bezos is able yeah. to do what he's done is because he's in a, a very scalable environment. Mm-hmm. Econ- Mm-hmm. You know, real estate's a different animal. I know a lot of people do real estate in your audience and mine as well. Like real estate, like I can tell you because I have other companies in different niches. Real estate is by far one of the hardest, but it also is the equalizer of dummies. That's like, right. Anybody can make money. I think where people get in trouble in real estate and what changed my life in 2005, six, seven is I started realizing real estate is a stepping stone to get to where I want to go. It's not the end all be all. I'm mm-hmm. not trying to grow a, a $10 trillion real estate portfolio. Yeah. I'm trying to use it. I, here's the difference. I'm asking a question of this. What can the business do for me? Mm-hmm. Not what can I do for the business? And when you start asking that question, it starts changing the dynamics of what you're able and willing to do to grow it. Because to go to 100000 a month in real estate is doable. Anybody can do it if you put the work mm-hmm. in it. Once you start scaling past two, three, four, five hundred a month, yeah, things change drastically. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I want to I want to get back to the book in a minute here, but obviously, you you mentioned that you know a lot of people that that follow us are in real estate. Yeah. What are you seeing as a, as an entrepreneur? And I want to talk high level business owner that happens to be in the real estate business, right? What are you see from a high level, considering everything going on and moving forward? Um, you know, I, I see so many people that get into real estate and it's about the wealth building, and yet they get caught in the hamster wheel. I've been there you know, of wholesaling and grinding and going deal to deal. And the truth of the matter is, is that like, that doesn't even like really fire me up anymore. I'm not passionate about that. It's just a vehicle. I get more passion out of getting a testimonial from somebody that I helped than I do from closing a deal. Like that's God's honest truth. 
Um, and I'm grateful for the money. Don't get me wrong, but it's just a vehicle and it's a tool. What do you see? Talk to the real estate investor, but as a business owner, you know, like what, how do they need to be looking at the real estate business now, especially in the environment that we're in, um, moving forward? Cause years ago you were in like the grind, right? You were the technician. Now you're completely removed from that. You still have a successful real estate business, but it doesn't require your effort on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, yeah. And maybe we can tie that into the book. Like, how do we start to transition from mule to magician? Well, the mule is in the day to day. I think yep. a lot of want to be real estate investors think they have a business and they don't. I think realizing that and being cool, like it's an ego thing. Like, okay, you can tell all your friends that you own a business and you're an investor, which sounds cool on paper and not saying it out loud. But the reality is you go home laying in bed, you know, it's not true. Mm -hmm. And you got to come to realization. I had that realization back in 2005. Like I was the ultimate mule in my business. I, by the way. Oh, Mark, I don't know if you can hear or see me guys. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I think Mark froze up on us here. Uh, I want to make sure it's not on my end. Guys, shoot me a quick comment. I lost you, Alex. Okay. Yeah. You're frozen, but I can hear you. There you go. You're oh, back. There you go. There you go. Okay. You're good. So, so what I was saying is like, I think, you know, when I realized when I was sitting on the beach in South beach, Florida on my flip phone with a fax machine up in my condo, you know, saying I'm going to be here for a month. I hope I don't lose everything. Um, I, I realized like I'm a mule and if I don't like separate traveling was the best thing I could do for my business, uh, for myself first and foremost, and then my business, because I grew from it. Therefore my business would grow from it. Uh -huh. um, I'm in a chest to chest. I was virtual before virtual was a cool thing. Like yeah. way before virtual investing even existed. Back in what? Like 05, 06, right? December 31st, 05 is when I started. Yeah. There you go. Like being virtual. So, and then I wrote that book in 07 called virtual investing made easy, created products and all that. But like just sharing like, cause it is a transition. It's, it's mentally like I, banks were, I, I was like the first person in our bank to send a wire from the computer. Like they had to send the key fat. Like they're like, I call the bank. How do you do this? They're like, we have no clue. You're the first guy in our bank to ever do it. That's crazy so to me. Like, you know, but a forced, a forced growth. Um, I think for me, it's like one, take your ego out of it. Realize you don't know anything at all. Even if you're making money, the truth is the market has made so many people complacent thinking they're smart. Yeah. Um, so true. You know, so I think this is a great time. The tree's being rattled. People are falling out, hitting their head, bump, get, you know, you either go bounce up or bounce, bounce out. Um, realizing you don't know much, start getting around good people like Alex and people he's working with, you know, like, cause you got a great community and realizing like, how do I turn this into a business? And, and business is required, you know, processes, procedures, um, structures. If you're not spending money on marketing, you have no business. Like there's mm -hmm. little things that business owners have to do that most people are willing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you find that? All, man, you've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and you've been in this game a long, long time. You've worked with probably thousands of people at this point. What have you seen is what the main thing that you see stopping people? Is it mindset? What's holding people back from being in the grind as a technician, as Michael Gerber from the E-Myth would talk about it? What's the main thing, the main hurdle that um, keeps people stuck in the grind versus being the magician? And then more importantly, how do they start to just bust out of that? Like, is it, is it just a decision that they make that, Hey, I'm no longer going to be the mule or is it just, is it a day by day process where you have to be very strategic and intentional to like, just start getting out of that world? I, I think it's a lot of the above, but like the first and foremost, I think the first thing is, again, you got to admit you don't have a business. Um, the reason most people don't step out is because they think no one can do it as good as me, yeah. you know, and that's it's not true by the way. It's not true at all. The truth is yeah. they'll do it way better than you, from my experience, mm -hmm. um, because it's their job. It's their structure. If they have, to, you, you're not making a hundred calls a day to sellers. You're not talking to fit 50 buyers. You're not sending one email a day out. You're not going to three appointments. A day. Like you just humanly can't do it all. So if you can set up structures, again, that's what businesses do. They have, here's the acquisitions department, disposition department. Here's the deal coordination department. All these things tie in together and you create a formula around it. If I put a hundred dollars in here, it spits out X, blah, 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 blah. And that's the data, not drama concept. You got to mm -hmm. understand your drama filled environment. Your emotions are lying to you because you're laying around, hang out with your buddies at two o'clock in the afternoon. You're like, dude, I'm killing myself over here. I'm not sure why I'm not getting results. Well, I know why you're not getting results. It's two o'clock. You're hanging out drinking with your buddies. Like a business owner, like you would fire yourself if you work for yourself, 100%. Yeah. All, yeah. all business owners, loosely, 
would fire themselves if you work for yourself because you're not consistent. You're trying to overdo stuff. You're not talking to the right people. You're if you're talking to people, like I could go on and on on the list of things that you're not doing that you think you do. Um, but you got to get the data cards. You got to say, hey, I need 100 calls a day. This will happen. Like it's just numbers. It's it's simple math, and it really is that easy. Um, and that's what drives me nuts because I'm like, it's not hard. It's easy. It's math. Um, yeah. So, but that's a mindset. Once you come to a conclusion, like people will help you do it better. And not only that, I think the thing is, is most people, honestly, Alex, hasn't been taught how to be a leader. Hmm. Like, this requires leadership conversations, not, you know, want to be real estate investor conversations. That's right. That's My right. conversations, I'm not talking about, you know, how, how do I save $45 on a wire fee? I'm going to go pick up the check. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about, uh, I was talking to a guy did, you know, yesterday. He's like, dude, they charged me $45 for a wire fee. I'm like, well, you're not doing enough because it should be free. Cause once you get over a certain amount in your account and this, it's a free, it's free. Like you're worried about the wrong things. I'm not. Even you thinking. see that right there. What you just shared is the difference of how you think that I find a lot of other people think it's, it's, you're not, you don't want to waste five, 10 seconds talking about a $45 wire fee. It's about how do you do more so you don't even have to worry about it? You see how like your mind defaults to that. And that's what I want to kind of highlight because I think that's the difference between the mindset you have in a lot of successful entrepreneurs and those that just kind of struggle. And by the way, I've been there as well, where sometimes I kind of feel like I'm nickeling and, and I catch myself and I said, I'm focused on the wrong thing. So I'm not like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm putting myself here. Like I got the right, man, sometimes I struggle with mindset too. And that's just being real. Everyone um, does. Everyone does. Yeah. Right? Like it, it's, it's a constant evolution. Like you guys understand we're programmed. We're all pre-programmed. Mm -hmm. So we got to, I call it thought auditing. Anytime you feel that way, stop, ask yourself, why do I feel that way? Where did that come from? Your thoughts are not your thoughts, by the way, originally. It comes from grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, sister, brother, best friends, all these people, your teachers, the people that molded you. Like the way I think was because my mom and dad, like right. shut the door. What do you think? We were born in a barn. That comes from my mom and dad. That comes from my dad. And then that comes from his dad because they come, they probably did grow up in a barn, right? Like that's real talk for them. So, you know, if I don't catch it, like what's a 12 cent air conditioning out the back door going to do it? Is that changing my life? So Back in the day too, Alex, I remember I used to call, and I know investors still do this, calling Home Depot. Like, you know, every deal had to run through me to approve the, the charge for the project number 1276, you know, whatever. Right. And I'm like, okay, it's $1,800. Do they have any monster energy, energy drink in that? Do they have any beef jerky? And do they have any tools? That was my first three questions every single time. And they're like, oh, they have a beef jerky and a monster. So I would literally flip out. I'm not paying for their beef jerky. I'm not paying for their monster. I'm getting ripped off. And it's like $7. But it literally would consume my day. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I'm like, they're taking advantage of me. They're ripping me off. They're stealing from me. Blah, 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 blah. The truth is, if I had an account just set up and I didn't even see it, I wouldn't even, it wouldn't even, you wouldn't even notice it's con. That's you right. Know? Right. I think people are so hard focused on all the little things that they can't, mm -hmm. focus, they can't go the big things. Yeah. And I have, I have something to piggyback on, but guys, if you're joining us now, I mentioned at the top of the show and I want to mention it again. Um, a couple of days ago, I picked up 11 copies of Mark's book, uh, magician versus mule. Uh, if you guys head over to flipempire.com forward slash DM for short, or you could just find it on Amazon. Um, I kept one copy for myself and then 10 that I want to give away. All you got to do is share the broadcast here and then go subscribe on the Flip Empire show, uh, flipempire.com forward slash podcast. That'll take you to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe there. Shoot me an email. First 10 people, I'm going to send you guys the book, Magician versus Mule. So um, I want to kind of get back to what you were saying, Mark. Uh, I've heard you talk recently about TOTS, which I had never heard of that acronym. Share with people what that acronym is and how they can start to, well, I don't want to steer your thunder, but go for it. No, I mean, it's a thought on the thought or a thought audit, right? Like, when you're sitting here working and you, you see a deal, for example, I can tell you right now, if I see a deal, I know it's a deal like this in two, like literally nanoseconds. But what I used to do is I, I'd sit on it and I'd try to turn it into something bigger, better, mm -hmm. stronger, or not. Like I would spend an hour on, on the side. I'm like, why is this thought coming in? Like, am I afraid of making money? Am I afraid of money? Am I afraid mm -hmm. of like risk? Am I like, what is the thought stemming from as opposed to, and then what forced me to create a formula to strip that emotion away from that thought. And then it's like, it literally fits in it or it doesn't. 
Like here's the like I you know uh, the problem with being a deal maker, you try to put deals together on everything. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of you know a double edged sword. So for me in the single family space, this is the formula. It either fits in the box or it doesn't. We're not trying to be creative. We're not trying to like we're going to stick a hundred people in there. Two deals are going to spit out. No more, no less. Let's just move it forward. Mm -hmm. um, but Mark, you're a deal maker. We get three deals. Okay, cool. I, but I have to be involved in every step of that. That's you know, right. so I'd rather have two deals again. What can the business do for me? Not what can I do for the business? The formula is structured and then it just runs. So, and this, by the way, this goes on everything, Alex, this goes through relationships, the way you treat your wife or your husband, when, when they trigger you, why do they trigger you? What do they say? What don't they say? Do they chomp? Do they suck their teeth? I mean, it's endless. It literally yeah. is endless. Why do you feel that way? And we all know, pick your battles. The problem is, are you picking the battles with yourself too? Hmm. A lot of times we get, you know, we all get emotionally sucked down these certain paths, like certain times. But my thought auditing has really helped me reduce a lot of stress, you know, focus on the positive, you know, and, and to, it's just, dude, we're crazy, man. We're just crazy. Yeah. Beings, yeah. You know? Do you think, I don't know if you've been asked this before, but it, it just came to mind when you, when you mentioned something on the personal side, um, does magician versus mule, does that carry over outside of business? Uh, 100%. I think it's, I think it starts outside of business. Talk to me. Talk, elaborate. It's, it's an individual thing, right? You, you're the mule. So once you realize you're a mule and you start having this conversation with your spouse, you realize that your spouse is probably a mule too because we all are. So you start talking about some neat things. Like, for example, my wife and I, every Sunday, we're, we, we try to sit down and talk about goals and dreams and where we're going because, you know, we're growing and changing. And, and a fear yeah. of ours is always like she, you know, I don't want to de degrade her goals and dreams and vice versa. So if mm -hmm. we're not talking about it and collaborating about it, you know, you got to remember, like we both grew up with not a lot of money. So now we can buy cool stuff. And she's like, she might, her mule might kick in and like, that's a lot of money. And I'm thinking this, we wouldn't even know if it's missing, you mm -hmm. know, like, so if we're not yeah. conversating about the magician mindset or wow, that's going to take, maybe she thinks it's going to take a lot of time away from the family to make that money. Well, hon, no, that's not the case. Cause I bought this company. It's producing X. Here's what's happening. Okay. And now she's all like, oh my gosh. So it actually will relief on the personal side. It, it, it's a lot of neat things can happen. And who doesn't want to help your wife or spouse? I'm using my wife because I have a wife, but like your spouse to want to do more and be more and like mm -hmm. dream bigger, you know, like what's your dream house look like? What's your perfect day look like? Yeah. I think magicians, once you can get in the magician mindset, mules, like we just wake up and go. Magicians are very on purpose, very intentional. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have routines and, you know, even though you tell an entrepreneur, we don't have a routine, we all have routines. Some serve you, some don't, by the way. But, you know, getting more conscious of that and being intentional, man, really can compound over time to a whole nother world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I, I want to kind of stay on that for a second because believe it or not, I, well, I know you're going to agree with this, but entrepreneurs sometimes struggle on, on the personal side of things, whether it's with relationships, whether it's with work-life balance, which I'd love to get your thoughts on work-life balance. Is, is that, is that a unicorn that doesn't exist or do we just go through seasons in life? But man, I see people that are struggling on their personal side, whether it's relationships or whether it's their weight, whatever the case might be. And then it spills over into the business side and it's, it's all connected, you know, like, so if, 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 if your business is struggling, it's probably going to have an impact on you personally and vice versa. Do you kind of view it as two separate things in your life or do you find that they're connected and how do you go about balancing the two, right? Like you have, you just did a big book launch and you've been on, you know, you, you it's like this big media blitz, right? You've been on podcasts. You, there's so much going on in your life, but yet you're a father, you're a husband, you're a leader to your bit. Like there's so many other Mark Evans, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, how man. do you go about juggling that versus feeling like you're being pulled in all these different directions? I think, I th again, I think it's part of the game, man. I think it's, uh, I think we're going to always feel that way, you know, cause we want to grow harder. We want to grow faster. We want to grow bigger. We want to be smarter. We want to have be a great dad, a great husband, a great kid. Like we want to be all these. I think that's what drives us. We want to be good at everything and great. Um, like right now with what's going on, like I try to be done by two or three o'clock. I was in the pool yesterday with my son from three to five, three to four thirty, four thirty. I'm hanging out with Dina, five thirty. We're having dinner. And then I had to get back on the phone at six 30 for an hour with somebody. But I think it's just communication. Um, I don't believe in work life balance because my world, I think it's compartmentalizing it. 
you know, if my business doesn't make money today, that's not going to affect my life. Or if it does make a lot of money, I'm going to continue to do the same thing I'm doing already. So, mm-hmm. I think, you know, creating that like separation, meaning, um, again, I have a rule. I have a businesses. And yep. as you know, not everything goes. It's not all rainbows and unicorns in business. Not but all. I do think entrepreneurs, like if you can't compartmentalize, like you understand, I could literally be on a, I could be on a call with my lawyer because we're getting sued or creating a, like whatever's happening. And 13 seconds later, my son's hugging me and I'm about to start crying because he tells daddy he loves him. And then 14 minutes later, my wife's saying, why aren't you talking to me? And then I have to stop and talk to him. Like, dude, all this stuff is, is called life, you know? Yeah. And I think us, like we're not, I'm very like passionate talking. Mm-hmm. And my wife can say, oh, why are you yelling at me? And I'm like, I'm not yelling. I love you. What are you talking about? Then now we're fighting about that, you know? So, but and not fighting, but just bickering. And yeah, yeah, I get it. I think it's like, I want to, I just love, like, I just want to know. And I'm not asking, like, I'll, I'll ask questions, not because I'm trying to figure out how to manipulate you. I just genuinely know your mindset process behind the thought. You know, yeah. again, your thought on the thought, like, why do you think I'm not paying attention to you? I'm sitting here. I'm not doing anything. I'm looking at you. Well, you're judging me. Well, I'm not judging. I'm just trying to just understand what's going on. Don't use that mind manipulation on me. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how to do that. You know, like it goes that like, oh, man. I'm the only one. <laughs> Bro, I can, I can so relate. So let me share this with you. About a week or two ago, my, uh, my wife and I kind of got into a little bit of an argument and it wasn't anything like crazy, but we, we got, we got into it, you know? And, um, and I started asking her questions and she looks at me and she goes, I don't need a coach right now. And I was like, oh man, you know what I mean? So it's like, but what I've, what I've realized the older I get is whether something goes south in business or whether it's, you know, a, a disagreement with my wife or whatever the case might be, I've learned to kind of step back, just look at it for what it is and hit the reset button. And for me, it's almost like I visualize just a reset, like I'm going to separate myself from the situation and I'll come back. And I always come back with a different perspective. I don't know if you have any tools or strategies like that, that, but for me, I have found that I'm always looking for, because uh, I'm just on this constant growth mark as you are to be a better person, to be a better father, better husband, better leader. And I feel like I can never catch the person I want to be, which pushes me for more. Does that make sense? Oh, hundred percent, man. I, I think, I, I mean, I always want to be better, man. I genuinely want to be the best. I want to be the guy that's like, he's the best dad in the world, the best husband in the world, the best friend in the world. Like I'm pursuing the best of that every day. Um, yeah. And unfortunately it's not, that's not always the case. I, I mean, listen, the truth is we're the common thread of every, every problem and, and uh, solution. Yeah. So I think again, it's the thought on the thought is like, when I feel this way, why is that stemming from it? And if it keeps happening with the same person that this might be a different story, but uh, right. typically it's me and my expectations are out of whack. Yeah. There you go. There you know, you go. so it's like, if your expectations are out of whack with what like, I, yeah. I gotta understand as an entrepreneur, we're, we're programmed to move very quickly in my experience. And sometimes with spouses or people around you, they're very like thinking and they want to talk about it to talk about, I'm like, make a decision. All right, let's go. So for example, my wife and I, we don't t- I don't know what house bills cost and all that. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. You know, I'm like, Hey, I'll take care of the business side. You take care of the homestead side and you don't have to come to me. If you need a house cleaner, just pay the house. Like if you need something fixed, fix yeah. it. Like right. I don't want to talk about, cause I know it triggers me cause my old me comes in like that's $700. We could get someone to do it for 500. Call this part. Like that's just what my brain does. Yeah. So instead of, and it, again, it saves $200, but it creates a fight <laughs> for no reason. And we're better than that. So yeah. instead, it's like, hey, set up a parameter or expectation. Babe, don't tell me anything that costs less than 10 grand. I don't need to hear about it. I trust you. That's why I married you. You know, and vice makes versa. Sense. You know, yep, so makes sense. it just makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And by the way, that obviously applies, you know, on your, in your, on your team, right? I remember, oh. I think years ago, you told me that like at one point you would go to the office and Peter would be like, Mark, you need to get the hell out of here, dude. Like you're, you're like unwinding everything I've been working towards doing. And I, th- I just thought it was a funny story, man. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that as sometimes as entrepreneurs and as visionaries, we want to step in because we just want to like try to fix things. But most of the time we end up kind of screwing things up is what I have found anyway. Well, you know, everyone always brags about like, you know, what are you up to today? All putting out fires, right? That's what all entrepreneurs say. Well, from my experience, I'm the arsonist. I'm the one creating the fires just to make me feel, create my ego. So they have to call me to fix it. Um, You do this subconsciously. By the way, everyone has done this 100% if you're in business. 
Um, good enough is good enough, man, in business oftentimes. You know, if I go in there and tell them, like, just because they say this or that, I don't know. Like, I'm only seeing that micro moment in the way they talk to a seller or talk to a buyer. Maybe they're having a bad moment. Like, we all have that. Mm -hmm. uh, could you imagine if someone's watching us? I mean, it'd be terrible. But if I walk in and I catch that and I grab them and I want to talk to them and then I get them anxious or whatever I would do, now all of a sudden I screw up their whole trajectory for the rest of the day, rest of the week, rest of the month. So right. I think I'm helping them, but I'm actually unwinding everything that they were helping, you know, their own path to do. Um, that's the difference with, between being a manager and being a leader though, hmm. right? I was actually thinking I was leading them, but I, what I was doing is unwinding what management was doing. That's right. There's a difference between dictating and delegating, right? There's a oh, difference between, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, that's a whole separate, you know, that, that's a seminar, right? But um, yeah. guys, make sure you pick up, highly, highly recommend you guys pick up the book, uh, Magician versus Mule. Um, Mark, your, your, your books are always easy to read, man, and they're packed with nuggets. So I vouch for them a thousand percent. Um, guys, you can head over to flipempire.com forward slash DM. That's the short of it. Or you could just go to Amazon magician versus mule. Uh, we want to answer some questions. There's already been several that have been popped in here. Um, brother, I want to, I want to start to kind of wind down and then I want to open it up for Q and a, cool. I said this at the top of the show. You're one of the best people I've seen when it comes to collaborating. And it's almost like with you, one plus one equals 10, you know, you have this ability to just like connect with people and then I see you take it to like a whole nother level. How do you go about, I'm trying to think of the, of the right way to ask this question. How can people start to be more intentional about connecting without necessarily expecting something in return, but just leading with value and Hey, how can we collaborate? How can we do more together so I can help you out in turn? You're going to help me out. And then we just impact other people at a higher level. You get what I'm saying? It's like, is there something specific that you do or think about as far as wanting to collaborate and connect with the right people? Or do you just feel like it comes natural to you? Well, uh, no, it's not natural. It's definitely uh, probably the opposite of natural. I think the biggest answer, the, the answer, simple answer, but big answer is you got to put their needs before yours. You okay. know? And you got to be abundant about it because not everyone I talk to is ever going to turn into anything financially. Mm -hmm. But well, dude, the true story, I'm actually putting a deal together right now today um, that I'm doing that started off on a call on Sunday with a guy I was talking to and I was listening to him. And I didn't even understand what he was saying at the moment because I was just I was genuinely listening to him, mm -hmm. And uh, which is, sounds silly to say because it's hard to genuinely listen to someone. It's not easy because you're thinking of your next thought. You know, it's a skill. Yeah, it, it's, it, a skill. it's not easy. So I was like I was listening to him and what he was really saying was not what he was saying. So he's like, hey, blah, 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 we're killing it over here, but this is really bad, X, Y, Z. And I, I heard that, but I didn't hear what he really, he was really asking for help. And I didn't hear that. So when I got off the phone, I was like, Lane, I text him, I'm like, hey, man, I think I got an idea. And it was a deal. I could, I, could, I could literally make a decent amount of money on the deal, but I just introduced them to two guys and they put the deal together today. Love and it. Um, so it was <clears> one <throat> of those things, it's like, I, I could help him, I could get involved, I could, get, it could, I could make a couple bucks. It, it, he would still be happy. But mm -hmm. I think I put his, he needed help quicker than what I was able to move on it. And yeah. I just introduced the two people and step back. And I don't need anything or want anything except I just really want to help the guy. And yeah. what's cool is the guy that's buying it, it's helping him too. It literally, I just put two people together and they will both like, they're going to come back to me and say, Evans, three years from now, 30 years from now, whatever. Um, I think that's another thing too. I'm in the game forever. Yeah. You know, I'm not thinking of this. How quickly can Alex and I make a dollar? I'm thinking, thinking of the long game. Yeah. I, it's one, I'm not stopping ever. I will be this until I die. I promise. You know, like I'm not going anywhere. I don't, I'll, you know, I genuinely like think about how to serve the person, man. And it's an abundance mentality. Yeah. If you get rich, that doesn't mean I can't get rich. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do a deal, that doesn't mean I lost the deal. So it's all this yeah. weird stuff. It, dude, in my mastermind thing, I have a thing called the DM family. You know, like literally 30 or 40% of the guys are in my direct market. I yeah. teach them everything I do. They're in Columbus and Cleveland, Ohio. Like they're in my direct core real estate markets in business. Brother, I from time to time, I have people that reach out to me and say, why, why do you host uh, the Flip Empire show when there's people in your local market that listen to it? I'm like, I don't even think that way. Like it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. We you do know? more deals. Right? Yeah. 100%. Like, it's crazy. Like you actually will end up doing more deals. And uh, it, it's wild, man. It's just changing the concept. And the, again, the thought on the thought, it's, 
the old me is like, how much can I make from Alex today? Mm-hmm. You know, and I never made as much money as I do now. Not even remotely close. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, that's because you're thinking long term. You're not thinking short term. So exactly. Uh, by the way, if you have a guest there, who, who, if it's Dina or Drea or little I baby, I thought I, I thought I heard her pull up, but I was, well, I was going to say, bring them, on. bring them on. So, all right, guys, let me, let me, uh, let me pick some questions out here. Um, I wish I knew who this was. Sometimes this service doesn't pull up the name, but, um, I have one question, please help. What do I need to get from a business owner when buying their business? It's a, mar- so apparently this person is looking at buying a marketing business and they're asking, what do they need to get? get everything <laughs> Fin financials obviously is extremely important. You know, you, you want the P and L you, you want, you want the cash flow statement, you want the balance sheet. I mean, that, that's the first thing that obviously that comes to mind for me. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's like, what are you buying and P and L's, um, trailing P and L like the last five years to however long they've been in business. The biggest two, like just in real estate, why are they selling? You mm. know, like understanding Oftentimes, there's many reasons why people sell. So you just got to be clear on listening to why they're selling, kind of what I'm talking about today. Like the guy's selling because he can take that money. He's selling at a discount. He can take that money and go place in a business that's working and 10x mm-hmm. his money quicker over there. That's why he'd sell at a discount. So, Alex, same reason we see it a lot of times people are like, well, if it's such a good deal, why are they selling to me? <laughs> well, understand the story. You might know why. You know? That's right. That's right. And I think when you're actively listening, I know you'll, you'll, you'll back me up on this. When you're actively listening, sometimes it allows you to craft a solution that maybe is better for both parties that they hadn't even thought of. So oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't just accept the surface level reason as to why they're selling, but sometimes you got to dig deeper and there's, there's a deeper motivation, if that makes sense. hundred um, percent. Yeah. It's a very powerful thing, but that's awesome. I like buying businesses. I'd rather buy them than build them from the ground up uh, for many reasons, but that's, I hope you succeed on that. That's awesome. Yeah. By the way, uh, guys, again, if you have questions, uh, now's the time to put them in. Um, One thing I would not even challenge, but one thing, I guess, if I was talking to this person, I would ask them is what's your end goal? Like, what do you, what are you ultimately trying to accomplish? Because that may or may not give you a reason to move forward or not to move forward. You know what I mean? So like, it's so important that you understand what your goals are and where you're going. I'm such a big believer in just having a vision for your life, having a vision for your business. Let that kind of be the guide to, uh, to make decisions, right? Yeah. Um, no, that's a great insight. I, it's probably the biggest mistakes I've made in my life in business is just buying stuff to buy it because I could. You mm-hmm. know, I should have, I didn't ask the next question you're asking is why am I buying this? What is it going to do for me? Um, it's going on right now. A guy in the DM family is talking about a business and I'm like, what do you want the business to do for you in the next 12 months? Like, listen, we mules, we'll all work hard. <laughs> we'll work 50 hours a day just to do it, to make it work. But really, why are you buying it? Are you trying to get cash flow? Or what, what do you want it to do for you? Cash flow, lifestyle, right. both. I mean, there's different paths that you would take for each one of these. Mm-hmm. And the other thing DM is, is there's an opportunity cost to everything. So it may, by the way, feel free to feel free to disagree with this and, and what we can have a conversation, but my belief, and maybe it's a faulty belief, you tell me, but uh, I think if you say yes to something, generally speaking, you're probably saying no to something else because there's, there's 24 hours in a day. So there's always an opportunity cost to our decisions. That's something that the older I get, I'm just more aware of. If I say, I can't say yes to everything. If I say yes to this, you and I, you know, we were kind of, you joked with me because we were talking about this three weeks ago and I'm like, I looked at my calendar. I had a bunch of these. I'm like, Mark, how about like 10, 14 days from now? And you kind of like cracking up with me. But you know, when you say yes to something, I can't do something else during this hour. Like I, I want to be here. This is a choice, but yeah. by saying yes to this, I'm saying no to something else. And, and you have to just be aware of that. Yeah, it, it, you're right. hundred percent. I mean, it's, um, it's a piece you got to be aware. And, and not only that, like, like you said, is this doesn't necessarily generate revenue today, you know, okay. and someone cut, if you're watching Alex and saying, Hey, I want to, I want to do what he does. You might be going down the wrong path because you don't know the motive behind the situation. Right. He's here to serve. He's here to provide value. There is no end game. The end game is just to be valuable and to have great content and share with people to get testimonials. Like yeah. that's powerful. 
And I think a lot of times people are trying to mimic the wrong people, man, honestly. Yeah, so true. And you know what? Social media is such a powerful tool. It's amazing. It's such a blessing in our lives if used properly. But I see so many people go the other direction with it, Mark. Well, they might hop on this and see this and make a decision on their life and their business. But to your point, they don't have all the ins and outs. They don't have the behind the scenes. They don't know the thought process or the, the intention behind this, right? So, um, and then, you know, you see people posting uh, flashy things. And, and again, you don't know, you don't know everything that went into that. And so you might make an important decision, but you just don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. So you just got to be aware of what, what do you want? Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be you. Don't try to be me, be you because you're unique and God only made one of you. Absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, people could see the cars I drive, the houses I live in or the watches and all that. And they're like, Oh my God, I want that. I'm like, dude, you know how many years it took me to get yeah. one of those? Like, like delayed gratification, constant struggle, many nights of dry heaving, mm -hmm. still have those moments, like mm -hmm. big decisions. Like you don't realize, like, I don't see that as a, tro I, that's my trophy to myself. I don't need it. Someone yeah. to pat me on the back. Like I have very big goals. And you know, to me, it's just like, what am I capable of, man? It's powerful. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you, I, I've heard a lot of people, you know, talk about the fact that like when, when you want something, we're talking something material here, a car, a house, whatever it is, when you get it, it's, you enjoy it and it's somewhat short lived. But what has really resonated with me is that it's who you had to be to get that thing. It's not the thing itself. Don't get me wrong. The roles behind you is beautiful. You enjoy driving that car. You love having it, but it's, it's the man and leader and entrepreneur you had to be to be able to afford that car. It's not yeah, it's great that you have it, but is there a distinction there? In my mind, there is. It's, it's, I would think that you would value more the fact that, hey, I had to sacrifice and bust my ass and who I had to be in order to get that thing, right? Absolutely, man. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, I look at it and I'm like, I can't believe a hillbilly got it. <laughs> but I wouldn't expect anything less of myself. There you go. It's you like go. being out, it's the journey. When I see the car, I don't see the destination, I see the journey of what I had to do to get it. And now I'm asking, okay, what else can I do? You know, yeah. literally nanosecond I buy it. Now I'm like, okay, now, what, now I can do it. What else can I do? Right, you know, right, right. Animal. Is that something brother that you ever struggled with is like uh, just always focused on, on the end goal versus like learning to enjoy the destination. Is that something that at times was, it was a struggle for you? Dude, I, if you don't fall in love with the journey, you're in trouble. <laughs> Bingo. That's why I asked the question. What if the journey was the destination? You know, I think about that all the time. And because I, I can tell you right now, to me, the destination is when I go six feet under. That's about that's about the only destination I think that I, I don't know that I have to be. But like, dude, like when you it's like it's like when you take a trip, you know, like you get a lot done the day before you go, you get on the plane, it's chaos, you get there, you're like, oh, Okay, now what? <laughs> like everyone's just hanging out, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you want to get back to work. You want to get back at it. I love building me. I love – this sounds selfish. I want to be – there's Mark in the back. There he is. Baby DM. Love uh, that kid. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I want to be a better version of myself to, tomorrow, 1% better, push my boundaries. My son's watching. My wife's watching. My family's watching. You guys are yeah. watching. Like, I, I'm very conscious of that. And it doesn't, it's not like a weird, like I'm up all night thinking about this, but like who, I want to be better, dude. I genuinely mm -hmm. want to be better. Um, yeah. And what does better mean? I, I just 1%. I'm trying to get healthy. Mm -hmm. I, I know that's a problem for me. I, I eat when I celebrate and I eat when I'm sad. It's just kind of emotional eater, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think about how to be tighter with that and how to, you know, smarter with that and, you know, and not also like not beat myself up about it, but grow from it. Yeah. Yeah. Which by the way, congratulations, man. Cause I saw that you just, uh, you, you posted something about a week or so ago, you finished 75 hard, yep. which, uh, I mean, dude, hats off to you because, uh, I haven't been through it and it certainly doesn't sound easy. I'm sure it's a hell of a lot harder, but you got through it and dude, you look, I haven't seen you in, in this good a shape, uh, since I've known you, man, you look awesome. <laughs> you, you look awesome, brother. Yeah. One thing I want to kind of share and add with people is, whether you realize it or not, we just saw baby DM in the background there. He's watching his father. And so even like they, our kids, man, it, it blows me away how my little ones pick up things that I didn't even realize they were watching, but they're absorbing and they're absorbing the good and they're absorbing the bad. So, you know, thoughts on thoughts. We talked about thoughts, right? Um, monitor what you're saying, monitor your language, monitor like 
take inventory of your work ethic because they're they're seeing this. And to your point, you said this earlier in the show, they're going to model this. And a lot of what they see is going to stick with them into like through childhood, into adulthood. Um, and so it, I just, it's not so much a question. I just want to highlight the fact that like we're role models to our kids. We're examples. So be the right example. You know, ask yourself if, if, uh, if your children are picking up the right habits from you or are they picking up the wrong ones? And then you have the ability to change that. I, I think it's a massive motivator. Once you realize if you don't have kids, you got to find a motivators, but like people are watching, man. I, I talk about like, we're watching, they're watching. I'm watching. You're watching. It's not people. Are, we're in a voyeurism world right now. Everyone's watching you. Yeah. Even if they don't like you and heart you or whatever, they're paying attention. And um, it actually makes me want to be better every time. It, like when you get the shopping cart, you got to put the shopping cart back now. They're watching. You know, when you walk by a piece of trash on the ground, stop and pick it up. They're watching. Like, yes, even if yes. no one's around, they're watching. This, by the way, this is a, this is a muscle. You got to really, like, I, if I expect my son to do it, I expect me to do it, and vice versa. It's not do what I say and not what I do. That's, I don't, that doesn't fly with me unless I'm smoking cigars. You can't smoke cigars yet. But listen, <laughs> I don't hide that from my kids. They know dad smokes cigars once in a while. And, you know, listen, it's disgusting and it like whatever, but I enjoy it. You know, I have to have a vice here once in a while, but I think mm -hmm. having real conversations and kids seeing that and like, I, I don't, I don't want them to think everything's perfect every either, you know, yeah. I want it doesn't to, exist. It doesn't exist. And not only that, if they think it exists and they get in a real world, they're bigger trouble than if they did, you know, they're yeah. way more trouble. So. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Bro, this has been extremely valuable. Um, we got a couple more. I'm going to fire off here and then we're going to get, get you out of here in five minutes. Guys, again, highly recommend you guys pick up Magician versus Mule. Uh, FlipEmpire.com forward slash DM. If you have a question now, look at that. That's beautiful, man. Love it. Um, dude, uh, by the way, on a side note, man, I'd, I'd love to talk to you offline. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be so applicable, but the fact that you have written and published 10 books, 10 Amazon bestsellers, um, it doesn't, I've, I've never gone about the process of writing a book and there's something about that that really intrigues oh, me. Gotcha. Because I, 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 I love the fact that it can just impact so many people. Like you create something and it's, it's, it's a legacy piece almost. I see it. So, yeah. um, the fact that you released this thing on Drea's first birthday, I heard it was like, it went live when she was born. I think it was like 1234 or something. Yeah. Um, man, for whether you know this or not, I'm about to share it with you. Like that was inspiring for me being the father of about to be a five-year-old and now a three-year-old stuff is inspiring. It's like when I'm, when I'm no longer here, whether that's God forbid tomorrow or in 40 years, I want my kids to look at me and said, you know, he accomplished a lot and not so much what he accomplished, but it was the type of man he was, the type of father he was. Yeah, yeah. That's the stuff that drives me. And I'm always thinking about shit like that. No, it's no, key. one big thing on top of that. Too many people are walking around like they're living forever. Mm. You no, know, I have a sense of urgency, man. I'm, I'll be 42 in June. I'm halfway through my life if all goes well. And assuming I don't, I don't have any brain issues. <clears throat> like, I mean, there's real stuff that could happen, right? Like it's called life. Yeah. So I'm very conscious of that, man. I feel like, I don't know if you feel anxious, but I feel like anxious. I want to like do more. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Um, if somebody shared something with me along these lines, and then I'll move on to the last question here is they said, if you're 40 years old and to your point, you live to 80, you have 40 summers left. Like, and so when you break it down like that, when you think 40 years, you're like, wow, 40 years, is a long time. That's four decades. But when you think about, you got 40 birthdays, you got 40 summers, like that's not a lot, dude. Like 40 oh. of anything is not really a lot. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it, it frames things and it gives you perspective. Yeah, um, is, is what I have found. So, um, guys, again, flipempire.com forward slash DM, pick up the book. And, uh, let me see here. Anthony has, uh, he shared, Anthony's a good dude, by the way, if you don't know him, I'll connect you guys. Um, working so hard on that, had a great time. He was talking about delegating that he's, I guess, struggling with that and, uh, had a follow up here. It's a hard transition. I've struggled to overcome, but slowly been doing it not because it's been difficult. So yeah, it, it, look, uh, people, People struggle with that, the delegation and being too involved. And it's just, you're constantly working at it. And, uh, you know, I forgot who said it, progress, not perfection, right? Um, progress equals happiness. Just every day, get a little bit better at it. 1%. So well, I think too, man, I think a lot of people are focused on the wrong things like CRMs. I see so many people exhaust so much energy and effort in CRMs and they're changing it every six months or 12 months thinking a CRM is going to make them a better business person. It's not the CRM, man. It's, you know, I, I build a business with yellow notepad and paper. I don't use, I personally don't use a CRM today. 
I don't. My teams do. I mm. don't. I use pad and paper and my cell phone. Yeah. You know, I, well, by the way, this is a computer, right? It's not even a cell phone anymore. So it's a computer in your hand. But like, I can take notes. I can like, it's, it's called just like, it's not a CRM that's the problem, man. I think yeah. that's what people forget. It's like the action behind it. Um, me connecting with you, a CRM can't do that. Like I think right. CRM, I could queue it up and d- direct it, but like what takes out the personalization, man. I think connect. Yeah. That's what it's about, man. Relationships, man. That that's the one thing this business has given me. It's just connecting with guys like you, just the friendships, the camaraderie, the fact that I can shoot you a text or call you and Hey, I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling here. Whatever the case might be, uh, the relationship capital to me is priceless, man. So it's it's, a, it's priceless. And I think another thing too is so many people are trying to build a business that's way bigger than them. Start with where you're at. Mm-hmm. You know, start with one person. You don't need to have a business like me where I, you know we have all these moving parts. Like, stop trying to be Jeff Bezos day one. Be you day one and build up to that. Just aspire to be that. You don't have to be there today. Yeah. You know, you're not behind the eight ball. You're just on a different trajectory. You might even be bigger. For that's right. Else. That's right. You're, you, wherever you are right now, that's where you're supposed to be. Just be aware and go about the business of moving forward. Exactly. That's it, man. So, dude, I'll get you out of here. Any final uh, any final thoughts, anything else to add about the book? Um, let me put it up in the screen. If you guys want to connect with Mark, um, Mark Evans DM dot com. Connect with Mark. Um, great guy. Again, he's been a big inspiration in my life. Known him for four or five years, whatever it's been now. And, uh, it's just cool to see how you operate and how intentional and purposeful you are. And the fact that you like, you genuinely care about people, yeah. uh, you Sometimes know, people, to my detriment, but yeah, <laughs> dude, pe- but people, I don't want to lose that by the way. Right. Yeah. I don't want to lose that because I have that bad feeling sometimes. That's so right. I think it's thing. No, man, the biggest thing, first of all, thanks for having me, but I wrote this down thinking today, you know, about the mule versus magician thing. Like how do you keep a mule from kicking? Right. Like once you identify you're a mule, now all of a sudden people are trying to pull you back Mm. or add to you because the way you keep a mule from kicking is to keep them busy or moving forward. Right. And you got to And you got to know busy and moving forward is what we tend to want to do to kind of like fill a void. Yep. As a mule, you need to pull it back, create an you're going to have anxiety attacks, by the way. I'm not saying this is easy. We got to slow down the process Mm. and you got to start kicking your way out of the mule process and start thinking more magician type effect. And when you do that, man, I'm telling you, I mean, you've done it, Alex, it really does. And, and you start seeing how big this really can be. It really is free at all. Love it. love it, man, love it. Well, my book is on the way. I should be getting it today or tomorrow. I'm excited to rip through it. So Thank guys, you. again, highly, highly encourage you, flipempire.com forward slash DM, pick up magician versus mule. By the way, man, my apologies, dude. This is probably the most important thing that I just, I'm now mentioning it at the end of the show. 100% of the net proceeds are going to charity, right? All my books go to charity. Yep, all my profits Dude, go to charity. My bad for totally forgetting to mention that, guys. So, um, not just are you, not only are you picking up a book that can have a big, big impact on your life and your business. 100% of the net proceeds are going to charity, which is always, always a great thing. So, my brother, I appreciate your friendship. Uh, appreciate you being an example out there in our in our industry in our community. And uh, dude, I, I see you working, man. I, I see you creating an impact. You know, you, you've been you've been going live yourself every single day. You're publishing books. You got companies. I mean, you, you got a lot going on, and yet you're so giving. So for that, I want to acknowledge you and recognize you, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for having me. Thank, thank you. you guys. Appreciate you. And my friends, uh, thank you. Look, this is an investment in yourself. You've taken the last hour to listen to us. And, uh, I really want to acknowledge you guys for taking the time. Uh, David, appreciate the love. Great interview. Thanks, Alex, Mark. Um, thank you guys. And, uh, this is my passion. I love, love doing this. So I want to connect. If I can help in any way, reach out to me. I know Mark feels the same way. Mark Evans, DM.com and, uh, pick up the book. Uh, head over to flipempire.com forward slash DM. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Take care, Mark. Thank you, buddy.